Hi, I'm Graham Blackburn and this is Traditional Woodworking by Hand. And in today's episode, I'm going to show you three ways of making sure that when you plane the edge of a board, you get it perfectly straight and perfectly square. The first method is the simplest and the most straightforward. Whether you're using a Stanley plane, an expensive uh, modern Stanley type plane, or whether you're using a traditional wooden plane, assuming that you know that you hold the plane only with three fingers and you use these fingers to keep the plane against the wood, the simplest way is simply to plane. You can see I'm taking a nice shaving, but I'm not doing anything to guarantee that this edge is perfectly square. By virtue of the fact, by the way, that I know the sole of my plane is perfectly flat, when I take a shaving like you just saw, that's the entire length of the board, then at least I know that it's straight. But do I know that it's square? Well, let's take a square. And let's have a look. And I am pretty good at this. So that is pretty square. But you might find that when you do this, like at this end, you can see a little light. That means I wasn't holding the plane perfectly square on top of the wood. So that's the first method. The second method involves planing the edge of a board with a plane that has a fence. Here is a record plane that's actually designed to be a rabbit plane, but it's perfectly good at planing straight edges. What makes this special is that it has a fence. So by using the plane in such a way that the fence is held tightly to the wood, and once again, three fingers and pressing down on the top. Now I can take a shaving, as you see here, and I'm guaranteed just with one stroke to have made a perfectly straight edge and a perfectly square edge. As we see here, this is now perfectly square. If you don't happen to have one of these, there's no reason why you can't temporarily fix a fence to any other plane that you happen to have. Here is, this is actually a Lee Nielsen um, rabbit plane because the blade goes from one side to the other, and I've clamped a fence to it. So I would do the same thing. I put the wood in the vise, I set the blade, I set the fence a little down, and now all I have to do three fingers and ignoring the knob by the way you know how much i hate knobs run the plane along and i will get a shaving that's the length of the board and because of the fence is perfectly square that's the second method the third and probably the best method is to use a shooting board now if you've seen previous episodes, you may remember me saying that there is very little that you do in traditional woodworking with hand tools where you don't use some kind of jig. We just demonstrated using an attached fence. That's kind of a jig. But here is a really nice jig that's very simple to make. It's just two boards. One's called the bed and one's called the table and there's a stop here and what you do is usually you draw a line that you want a plane to and this overhangs the 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 uh, bed here and you put a plane whose side you know is perfectly perpendicular to its side on the side and you plane this way and this method is completely foolproof if there were a line that I was planing to, I would just keep planing until I got to the line. But by virtue of the squareness of the plane, 
and the fact that this is overhanging the uh, bed here, I make a line, an edge rather, that's perfectly straight and perfectly square. Those are just three ways of showing how <clears throat> variable the use of hand tools are, and also of showing how exact you can be with hand tools. So if you want to see more tips like that, then hit the subscribe button, come back, and pretty soon we're going to be into making some projects where we use all these different tools and all these different jigs. Thanks for watching. Feel free to send me comments, ask questions, and have some good woodwork.